Hey, everybody, and welcome to another night of World Women's World of Fishing Monday Night Takeover with Barbara and Angie. We are so glad to have you guys here tonight. We are really excited for the guest that we have snagged tonight, and she will actually be on here in just a few minutes. Um, so she actually forgot that we are an hour ahead of her here in Kentucky, so we're going to give her a few minutes. Um, to jump on here. And my co-host, Angie, we're going to give her a little bit of a break tonight. Um, she might look a little bit funnier than she normally does. Um, you might see her frozen. You might hear her cutting in and out. She might not understand everything that's been said. Um, but unfortunately, if everybody could keep you know, her and your thoughts and prayers, um, her and her family, they were in the Nashville floods. And they have just been have they've had a really, really hard time um, really since we've been back uh, from Texas. And so there it's been really hard. I've just been joking around with her because there's just nothing else, um, you know, that I can do with her. And that's just my personality. So I just try to to give her crap about it. Um, but so this broadcast is going to be probably difficult for her. Um, she's going to try and keep up with everything in the chat. If she starts to freeze, she'll try to keep up in the comments. So just keep an eye out for that. But I'm so glad that she's still going to be on tonight. Angie, thank you so much for still joining us. I know it's going to be frustrating tonight, but thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for being here tonight on the Pam Rigel broadcast. How you yeah, doing? Good. Hopefully I don't freeze up too much on, on everybody, but I am on the lake. It's flooded. We have to take a boat back and forth to get to land, and the internet is out. So I've been on my phone's data ever since we got back, and today of all days, um, it told me that I'm about out. So I'm on the last legs here, and that's why it's uh, not the best conditions, but hopefully I'm coming through loud and clear so far. Yeah, you are. You're actually, you're coming through just good. I mean, the same as always. So let's good. cross our fingers that through the show that you, that this will be the, the internet doing good for you. Yeah. So um, we're happy to have you here. Yeah. Um, how, you know, how has everything been going as far as the fishing since we've been back? Been a little delayed because of the flood. Like I said, as soon as we got back from Dallas, I mean, that pretty much happened on our way home was that weekend. That yeah. Nashville got all that rain. And so, uh, haven't been able to launch the boat. Still need to get my lift reconfigured for the new boat. And so... Hopefully that's going to happen tomorrow. I told them we can pick them up via pontoon and get them out here to get that lift reconfigured. And then hopefully once that's done, we can get the boat in the water. I can start using it. Had to add uh, the cornfield crappie gear mount oh. for my, my live scope, which actually arrived at the post office today. So Nice. Yeah. So I'm really excited to get that set up and start playing with that new toy and learning, you know, the ins and outs of the live scope. Well, I know that, you know, you really, really, really wanted it for, you know, when we were in Texas and, you know, that didn't come to fruition out there, but I'm really glad that it sounds like you're going to have it for North Carolina. Yeah, the biggest struggle out there was the fact that that's my transducer for that front graph. And I don't have a network cable connecting the one that's at the helm to the front graph. So I couldn't even, like, use that information. Um, one thing we did learn about a boat like a Key West that's full of foam is you want to get it rigged up all, almost 100% before they actually put that boat together because then they fill it entirely with foam. And there's not much you can do by the way of running new wires and things like that. So uh, love, love, love the boat. But it's it's like everything else in life. It's a learning process. Right. Well, I know that you. there's been a lot of things that you've had to learn throughout this process and very quickly. So I, mm -hmm. I completely admire you for just jumping in and doing it all at once. So you've been <laughs> doing a great job just 
hang in there. It's all going to yeah. come together. <laughs> that's, that's right. Every day we get a little bit closer. So good deal. Well, and before we bring um, Pam out here, I know that you have a new episode of the Woman Angler and Adventure coming out tomorrow. If you want to tell people about that before we bring her out here and before you cut out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, um, so, you know, this is the Women's World of Fishing Monday Night Takeover, and we don't, even though we've been kind of talking bass fishing and tournament fishing, we, we do mm -hmm. include all types of fishing. And so my episode mm -hmm. that's coming out tomorrow on The Woman Angler is with uh, a lady, Ch Charity Rudder. She's a guide, fly fishing guide, in the Smoky Mountains in Tennessee, and we had a really fun conversation about uh some funny bear stories there's a lot of bears out that way she also does saltwater fishing so we talked about nice. targeting tarpon on the fly and how that's very similar to hunting um, the smoky mountains are a little bit different in that they're very it's a very clear water and it's all wild fish so your approach to catch those is a little bit different than the stocked streams and stuff so it was a really good conversation and this week she has a women's glamping event going on in the Smoky Mountains for fly fishing. So it was kind of good timing. So that will be coming out tomorrow. Once it's live, the website for that will be thewomanangler.com slash 178. But you can also access it on all the major podcast platforms like iHeartRadio, Spotify, Apple, um, anywhere you, you find podcasts. Good deal. Well, and we'll put all this. Um, that's one thing I wanted to let everybody know that um, the towards the like after the the streams post to um, the Women's World of Fishing Monday Night Takeover. Um, once it posts and it's completed, um, a lot of the things that we talk about websites, they will be posted in the description so you guys can find these and follow up with them. Um, but I saw that Pam Rigel has, she is actually backstage with us right now. And I don't want to keep her waiting. She's probably getting ready to go out and practice casting or <laughs> do something. I don't know. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me one bit. And I have lots of questions for her. Um, so Angie, do you, do you have anything before we get this rock star out here? I don't think so. I'm excited. Okay. Well, let's um, get her out here and see how much she is willing to tell us about how she did all the things that she did at Hubbard because I'm ready to hear. <laughs> so, okay. Pam, we're getting ready to bring you onto the stage. Hello. Pam Ridgel, welcome. Thank you so much for doing this. How are you? I am great. How are you guys doing? We're doing wonderful. Thank you so much for doing this for you, for us. Tell us, tell us everything. Just, just, we'll just sit back. Tell us about your tournament. <laughs> so, uh, you know, Ray Hubbard is, it's really a close to home tournament for me. So I didn't know have a whole lot of travel time uh, to make it to the event. So I did get to do a little bit of practice. I went up there a couple of different times, uh, one back in November. And, you know, I did really good in November. We actually was able to go up river and uh, we caught some really phenomenal fish. It was fast. It wasn't, you know, the slow bite or anything like that. And I thought this is going to be great. But unfortunately the, uh, the, the difference in November and March, which I just don't think that we'd made it to that point in March because we all know that November is a good month. Those, the fall fishing can be really excellent um, as well as the springtime fishing. So, but uh, did get to go up there, a little bit of pre-fishing, uh, got to learn the river real well. But unfortunately, that is not what panned out for me during the actual tournament. So, um you know, it's, it's one of those things the first morning, I think I was boat number, I was way on up there, like maybe 17, 16, something like that for the first day of the event. 
So, okay, so that was by me. So we should follow you. <laughs> well, the the I did not really know where I was going to begin that day because where I went to, someone was at every spot that I was planning on fishing, and so it it kind of it's one of those things that can get in your head and you think, oh, what am I going to do now? So I actually went to a little a little area where I hadn't. Well, I had actually caught one fish there. And I thought, well, I'll try here. There's nobody here. That's probably not a good sign, but I'll, I'll try here and see what <clears throat> see what happens. Uh, so I fished there for a little while, and then things kind of started getting in my head. You know, what am I going to do? Uh, uh, I've got all these other people that are, you know, all these other anglers that are in, in the spots that I had uh, intended on going that morning. And so things can really get in your head when you do this tournament fishing. And uh, a lot of it, that's where you gotta gotta take control of your mind to say, you know, I, I know I can do this and and be calm and patient because that that's a big factor in tournament fishing is just the way that you take things mentally. Uh, that's a big challenge. So um, I went and did some fishing, just different things that I had kind of looked at uh, on the map, you know, things similar to what I was fishing, and. Uh, then about 10 it was it was later in the day it was getting on up there to where i'm getting i'm getting a little anxious because i still don't have a fish in the boat so about 10 o'clock I, I go into a marina and uh and in that marina is where i kind of hit the jackpot so uh, really from, from marina that, hmm where did we hear that before where did we hear marina on ray hubbard <laughs> yeah spots in which I, you know, I had heard and, and I had fished that lake actually back in 2011, I believe. No, it was actually 2012. Uh, that was actually my first win with the LBAA at, was at Ray Hubbard. And so, but it wasn't for me marina fishing at that time either, you know. So it was the same time of the year and I went back to those same spots that I had won the event but it did not pan out at all for me. And that was just fishing some rocks. You know, it was on the rocks of the I-30 bridge. I actually won the tournament back in 2012. Nice. So it, it was a little bit different this time, though. Uh, the marinas that, that I did fish, it was like it had to be a certain depth and then just kind of drop off. And it was it was kind of getting in the back areas of those marinas, not fishing I didn't have success fishing uh, the boat houses and things like that, but I actually got behind wherever I could get in the most narrow, smallest place to where I even had to get a paddle. I had to actually go get a paddle oh, wow. uh, before the event to be able to get up in there. And I got all kinds of scuffs and scratches <laughs> on my boat uh, just from, you know, forcing myself way up in that area. But most of my fish were caught in an area in the marina that was less than 50 yards long and the boat i could barely get turned around once i got down in there so it was less than or about 21 inches wide and about 50 yards long um, is where i had the success of the majority of my fish that i caught was in that one area and that that first that first day um it, it was awesome i was trying to get up into this one little cut that was so hard for me to maneuver that I had to have the paddle and I cast it up in there and I kind of just waited a second. I'm thinking I'm, I'm stuck in here. I can't go any further. I'm just going to have to go get the paddle and try to push myself, you know, up, up into this area. And about that time I pulled up on my rod and it felt really heavy. I thought, <laughs> I think I'm stuck because I was really <laughs> grass and some gnarly looking grass that I was fishing it wasn't the reeds I had caught in the reeds, you know, during practice. And that's really what I thought I was going to go uh, focus on was fishing the reeds. But this was some gnarly looking grass that uh, once you get up in that, it's it's like you, you are going to get stuck up in it. You know, if right. you, get too, you can't really fish it. You got to know how to fish the outside edges of it. So I threw up in that grass and I felt the little something pulled up on it. I thought, well, I think I'm hung up. So I, I pulled up on it again. And then I was like, oh, no, I'm not hung. This, this is definitely a fish. And so that 
that fish there was the second, or no, I'm sorry, that was the third fish that I'd put in the boat that morning. And that's the one that weighed 720, which ended up with me being able to get the big bass. But it was, it was a very nerve wracking thing because I'm stuck to where I can't use my trolley motor and I can't use my big motor. And I've got to get this fish in the boat and I can't move my boat. I've, so right. I had to bring it to me, which was, you know, one of those things that I was shaking so bad that it's something about catching the big bass always makes you, gives you the mm-hmm. shakes. And so uh, I, I, I got that one. I had a wonderful netter that day. She netted the, the fish for me and uh, got him in the boat. So that was, that was the, uh, that was the third fish of the day. And the other two fish were caught in that very same marina. Uh, wow. And a little bit further. And so, I awesome. Wow. <laughs> you know, and it's, it, it's just funny that you say that because, you know, like just the, you were doing something totally different than everybody else. Like the, as far as the depth, you know, wow. I like, it because we had talked about this last week that every, everybody was fishing marinas, you know, but nobody was fishing in areas like that, that I know of, you right. know? And so it was kind of the, I think, probably doing something different now what made you decide to go like that extreme because a lot of people you know were making the judgment I mean Ray Hubbard it doesn't matter what video what like literature you're reading it's the riprap the riprap the bridges the you know it's all of that stuff and like we were there like post cold front we had those terrible storms that had blown in and but the water was actually from what i heard was pulling out from when you guys started practicing so a lot of people were fishing out so what made you decide to go shallow because normally you would think, go out deeper, they're pulling out. Because I was thinking, you know, I fished out of Secrets Boat day one with Penny at the, you know, in the front. And bless her heart, I don't blame her one bit, you know. Like, she's in the front like, man, is there a twig in the water? Because I don't want to hit it, you know. And I would have been the same way. And there are a lot of nice boats in the LBAA, nice boats. And I was thinking, whoever's willing to get their boat beat up like we did at Truman <laughs> is going to do really good. So I'm, I'm glad that at least my instincts were right. I would have had no idea where to go, but it sounds like that's what paid off for you. But like that's just my kind of flying by the seat of my pants kind of thing but you're like Pam Ridgel <laughs> so like what you know, made you decide to do that <laughs> well I, you know I like fishing rocks and uh, I did a lot of research on the lake so even though it's a close to home lake I, I really don't go there that often Mm -hmm. I did a little bit of research and the research I think probably is one thing that panned out for me too because my strength I would say is fishing rocks I mean I love doing it I like fishing the rocks like that and so I I had done some research to know that there were a lot of rocks in that one area that you could not see you know with your eyes you couldn't see it Mm -hmm. but they were there um so I think that's one thing that, that I knew that there was stuff there that I liked to fish. And so it kind of gravitated me to that area to fish it um, just because I like fishing rocks. And so um, that's probably what pulled me that way to do it. And then when I, you know, when I found the fish, I'd actually done some pre-fishing up in there one day and I had got a really good bite 
if I just, I like to skip and I can skip underneath the docks. <laughs> so this one little area that I was, it was kind of like a little bridge and it was at the end of that marina and I skipped underneath that marina and I had something real big hit it. And I'm like, hmm, I, that was a fish. I know it was a fish. So I didn't even try it again. So mm. actually the next, the, the first day of the tournament, I went there and I caught my first fish at that same spot that I had skipped and missed the fish. I didn't catch him that day, but he bit it and carried it, or she did, because I feel like it was it was a bigger fish. And that was about a three pound fish that I had caught there underneath that little walk area. And so mm. that's kind of when, when I got that, then I thought, you know what, I'm gonna try my best because there was no access from that area to get in to that part of the marina that I was wanting. So I just went to the other end and that's what made me go up into that small area, you know, to, to fish that area. Because I thought that's that's a nice fish. It's just shallow. It goes really deep fast, though. It would go. It was from the bank oh. to 15 foot or uh, it was about 12 foot. From the bank to 12 foot within 20, 21 foot of, you know, just a boat's length. So hmm. that's so really. She, so that fish kind of baited you into that. Because that's that where. Area. What made me go back to that area that day to fish that that particular spot? Hmm. So you know, for my interest, for my, it worked out for my best interest on that day. Well, and you know, I am so glad that you brought up the that you like to skip baits. I'm because if do you do you remember? when you and I fished together, you probably don't because it was a decade ago, but do you remember that day? I do. You do? Do you remember what happened that day? I do remember that day. That was really a catastrophe for me that day. <laughs> really? Oh my gosh. I, I really was just like, she ain't gonna remember that day because it was just like another day out on the water for you. But yeah. the, just so that everybody knows, like, how amazing Pam is, like, she took penalties, like, multiple penalties that day for me. Because she could have weighed in early and not gotten dead fish penalties that day. But she was, but she was told that if she came in and weighed in early... To avoid those penalties, then we couldn't go back out, which meant that I couldn't fish. And like, I didn't, I didn't have a fish yet. I don't, I don't think I had a fish yet. But not only that, the other thing was is that if um, she didn't fish the rest of the day. Like, that was another thing where I was just like, Pam, what, what are you doing? Like, you, you know, you can fish, like, but she was like, you know what, I'm, I'm not going to fish. Like, I can't call anything and I'm not going to take a fish in front of you, you know, like that would be stupid. And, and that just stuck with me so much. Like, I don't think I ever told you that, Pam, but like, clearly a decade later, you know, and I haven't, you know, been you know to all the tournaments and around all that much and like it has really stuck with me and it will when I switch to the boater I guarantee you like it I just love you to death for that like it speaks about you as a competitor as a woman that is amazing so thank you for that <laughs> but with you skipping well, well if I'm sorry yes I was just going to say, say, you know, if, if I can't fish, somebody needs to fish. We're not going in early. We're going to fish. And, but, and I think that that's amazing, but I don't, I don't know that everybody would make that decision. Well, it, it's, I'll, you know, I always want my co-angler to do well as, as as, as much as I want to catch fish, I always want them to catch fish because a lot of this is um, we all know the more fish that we catch, the more we get, this thing just grabs a hold of us. So, you know, it, the, the object is for me is for me to catch fish, but I want 
whoever's in my boat to have a good time and enjoy the outdoors, enjoy fishing. And I never want anyone to have a bad experience, you know, if I can do anything to prevent that. Well, I, I know that you do. Like, you are very highly, that was like part of my description for you. Like, everyone loves you. Everyone knows you. You're very highly respected. I mean, and that's just as a person, <laughs> you know, like, let alone the fact that as a competitor, every, every time people go out to compete against you, they know that they have you to contend with you know, and, but I just, I have personally the, just the highest amount of respect for you because of that day. Um, because you really could have just been like, I don't want all the penalties that we're going in now. Um, cause there's a lot of tours probably where that may have happened, <laughs> you know? So I, I do really appreciate it. Um, let it be a lesson to all of us, you know, because we really can impact each other um, out on the water like that. Um, the other thing, <laughs> specific to you, and I was talking about this on Twitter. <laughs> so, oh, good. Derek Herring, you are here. And Jack, you are here. Okay, good. Some of my Twitter fishing family is here. And I was talking about you over there. And they are specifically here because of something that I had said over there. Is that I was, I was prepared to do something this entire winter specifically because of you. I even said it in a video. <laughs> and it's because of that day fishing with you and because of your skipping abilities. After my last fishing trip in December, I ordered, um, and Angie, I think you did this too. I did. <laughs> ordered plastic um, pitching lures so that I could practice with a bait caster. So anybody who's listening not with a spinning reel, bait casters. Pam doesn't do this. <laughs> you know, <laughs> she does this with bait casters. Um, but to practice skipping baits on concrete, on, you know, anything that I could find, the grass, in my, you know, at home, that's what I wanted to do. By the time I went to the LBAA tournaments, I was going to be as good as you. So, Jack and Derek, that, that's what I was talking about. And this woman right here, I will put money on her against anybody you can think of. She can put it between two twigs, uh, anything, under anything. So help me. I'll put money on her. I'll make a lot of money. She's the best. So Pam... High five to you. How did you learn to do that? And how long did it take you? Well, you know, <laughs> the more you do something, the better you get at it. So I, I love fishing boat docks. So um, that's mainly what I even learned when I, when I first started learning to fish. I fished a lot of boat docks. So now when I see boat docks, it's sometimes hard for me to not go fish boat docks, even though fish may not be there because I love fishing the boat dock so much. And so, um, you know, I, I just practice, practice, practice. And I used to, my boys, I have, I have three boys, which they are older now, they're married and grown, but when they were smaller, they had events that they would, um, they actually competed in. And so a lot of the training that they went through, I practiced with them to do those things. And that was in flipping, and pitching and casting and those those are actually events that were put on by BASS that really the boys competed and actually got to travel uh, one year we went to Walt Disney and they uh, competed there the, those were just kind of practice things that you could practice even if you weren't in a boat you could still 
get the fishing pole and practice, you know, how to skip because it is very important on if I can skip a bait underneath the dock where nobody else can get. Yep. And and the lake is hammered to where, you know, it's hard to get a bite. You can sometimes get it underneath those docks to where nobody else can get it and there's going to be a fish there. Mm -hmm. So it's very important in my fishing uh, to, to be able to, to get underneath those docks where no one else can get or get in the area where, you know, no one else can get. So I, I did a lot of practicing in the boat and out of the boat in order to make that happen. Well, I, I remember when I was fishing with you, it, it wasn't even, it wasn't even docks that you were fishing. Like it was like big, like it was like bushy trees yeah. And I'm just, and I'm, and I'm, and I didn't even say anything that day. I mean, I'm, I was fishing with Pam Ridgel. What am I, you know, like, <laughs> you know, I wasn't going to say anything, but I was looking at you like, wow, I shouldn't be here <laughs> because I, I literally, I couldn't believe it. I came home and I, and I told my dad, I was like, I don't belong with them. I, because it was unreal, like just how with bushy top trees, how far you could pitch back there. And I don't know if like you would gauge like a small thing. Like, I don't know what angle you have, but like a bushy top tree is pretty hard to go between. And you were just like, Phew. it was, it was amazing. It really was. Um, I hope one day to be even kind of on that level. Um, you summertime you you got to be really hard to beat <laughs> what's your favorite bait to skip with well my favorite bait in general is something that is very simple and it's it's a bait that it's just a basic bait um but i love fishing a wacky style uh bait and it's just a little cinco and fishing it wacky style and so that is that's what i catch a majority of my fish on it's like it doesn't really matter what time of the year it is those yeah. fish like that that's a bait that i i consider to be my old faithful bait so when i can't catch on anything else then that's a bait that always you know is there for me yeah i hear a, a lot of a lot of women talking about the the Cinco's and stuff because we we have a lot of Gary Yamamoto people yes. um, in the in the LBAA. <laughs> well, you know that's that's kind of Gary's favorite style fishing as well. So uh, he he's taught us well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm I'm okay with a Cinco, but. I have other old faithfuls, Angie. <laughs> it's, it's my that's my thing. I know it is. <laughs> I so love you, it. So as well, Angie. Yep. Uh, I don't do it wacky style so much as I do Texas rig. I love it when I can do it weightless. That's my favorite. Yeah. And and just uh, nice and slow. It seems to produce for me. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I want to get more into the wacky style, um, you know, and, and doing it that way. And the Nico rig is something kind of new I've been trying out, too. I like the Nico rig as well. Nice. So I wanted to ask you um, if in, you know, I don't want you to give away all your secrets, but what you you were talking about your, your planning for Ray Hubbard and you kind of knew about that area. Like, what are some of the things you do when you're, pre-planning for a tournament well you know you everyone has access to to google earth and so that's one way that you can really map out that lake and look at that lake and you know take the computer with me when, when i go to these events and this is something i've just kind of recently gotten into is is a uh, you know checking the lake out there there is google earth that you can get on there and you can see what the lake looks like when it's low when it's at its high and so uh it's that's a technique that's probably uh that's probably a a, 
a turning point in, in my fishing is is really studying those lakes to, to know what's there. You know, what's there that you that you can't see because the water is high now, but you know that what's underneath you. And whether it be rocks or there's a lot of rock piles on Ray Hubbard, lots of just rock that's like, you know, just there. And so I, I found a lot of that even, you know, during the during the pre-fishing time or the studying time, even before I got there on the lake. And I had all those things mapped out. So that was the pre-fishing time is to just to go and check all those spots out to see what is going to, to work. You know, and, and a lot of times the pre-fishing, it's not that you either catch fish because there's a lot of, there's, I mean, my tournament, like my pre-fishing week was not good. I really had not caught that many fish. The fish that I had caught was in the reeds and they were nice. It wasn't a fish that I had to put on the measuring board. I knew it was a keeper as soon as I caught it. So that's kind of the direction I was going was the reeds and just flipping the reeds because I'd caught, you know, three or four keepers there in, in a two day period. And I'm like, this is pretty good because I hadn't really been catching, you know, any fish. And so, you know, so pre-fishing is kind of just getting familiar with the lake, knowing where to run. That's, that's a big thing with, uh, with competitive fishing as well. You've got to be comfortable with where you're going and what you're doing and with the lake. So, um, uh, other than that, it's just sometimes being at the right place at the right time. But you, but you there there you got to have a mind that's you know that you can stay focused no matter what's going on. And then two is knowing that lake and knowing where you can run, where you you know where you need to stay away from. Just being familiar with it, and and, and those are those are things that's that's very important to me uh, because if I can feel confident in where I'm running, that I'm you know that. There's not anything that, that I'm going to be running into or just to get familiar with, with everything in the lake. Um, that's, that's just a big thing for me mm -hmm. is being familiar, being comfortable. And then, you know, my mind being clear and free that I can just, just focus and, and not be stressed. Right. Yeah. That's, uh, I think a lot of people don't realize or haven't used Google earth as much that, to know that you can actually pull up different times, different dates, different times of year and look at all of those images and kind of piece things together for when you're going to be there in the current conditions. One of my things is, I, you know, I'm running a bay boat with a T-top. And so one of my biggest concerns with some of these lakes we're going to, having never been to any of them before actually, is bridge clearances. And so I've been trying to research in advance which, which bridges I might have issues with and which bridges, right. you know, I can get under without any trouble. So that I'm looking at, uh, you know, Lake uh, Hickory and Logan Martin and some of these, you know, lakes we're going to be going to this year to try to figure out, you know, am I going to be stuck to a certain area and that I really need to just focus on that or if, you know, I'm not going to have any trouble. So right. I think... A lot of it is just having that confidence. I mean, there's so much about tournament fishing that's just having confidence. Do you think, Pam, that that I guess like preparation going into a tournament is the hardest part of the tournament fishing or the confidence or the mental aspect because or is it just when you're actually on the water or is it like once you're on the water you just are kind of like okay well we're launching now all the all the work is done now we're just going fishing like at, at what po like at what point is it just like okay well now it's now it's fun <laughs> you, you know what I mean like uh, well uh, you know I think probably the pre-fishing days that's the hardest time because it's you know, sometimes you don't really know what you're going to do and you're trying to, you're trying to catch fish. You know, you're on a limited amount of time. 
there's just so many factors. So those pre-fishing days can be really tough. Mm -hmm. Tournament days, it, it kind of seems like it should be backwards, but the tournament days are days more of, I'm thinking, you know what, I'm just going to go fishing mm -hmm. and I'm do what I know to do. And I'll just have to make those calls and, and just hope that I can make the best decision there, you know, that at that time, because Sometimes I can make a decision. I think, oh, yeah, that was a good decision. But then there's decisions sometimes that you're not sure, you know, should I really have gone to this place? If you go, if you go another 30 minutes somewhere and you think, ah, I didn't even catch a fish, you know. Right. But, you know, I always feel accomplished if I can get five spots on the lake or go to five different places. And if I catch a fish, it's almost like you want to just go ahead. Okay, I did what I, I came to do. I came to catch a fish here. I need to move to the next spot. And uh, sometimes we get stuck because we catch one fish and we want to just keep fishing that spot out. <laughs> and it's really better because that's another thing that you have to learn to do in tournament fishing is you got to manage your fish. If you are on fish, you do want to catch all the fish that you can catch the first day. But you also have to manage it for the next day that you can come back and, you know, pick up some too. Because that can be disheartening if you load up on them one day and you go back the next and they're not there. You know, because it, it, that's one of those mind things that it can play on you. So um, it's just good that you, you know, manage fish if you can, you know. I, and that's what I always, I make me notes. So I, I'll put notes in my phone to say these are the places that I caught fish. These are things that I'm going to go try these spots out because there are lakes where, I mean, I, I see this all the time, that I can go to that same spot on a local lake and I can catch fish every time. Or I'll know I've caught so many fish in this one little spot. And it's the same way with tournament fishing. We may not get that many opportunities, but if you can catch a fish at a spot, mm -hmm. I would always go back to that spot during tournament day if you caught a fish there because it's a good chance that you're going to catch one. Mm -hmm. um but those are just some things that you know it's uh you, you just got to stay stay focused stay focused and don't be stressed well and and that's one thing and i me and angie have probably said it on our individual shows and like probably in our the podcast we did um when we were in Missouri, but like, I think people assume that like, oh, you know, we just, we all just go fishing, you know, and that I mean, that's just what we do. Like, we just get ready and we go fishing. And I know like multiple of us in our LBA angler group, we're like taking pictures and the comments were like, oh my gosh, it looks like Tackle Warehouse threw up in my house and, <laughs> you know, and different things like that. And, and it's true, like, you know, relining all the poles and going through tackle and changing hooks on trouble, you know, trouble hooks on crankbaits and doing all this stuff. And then I know that like for me, by the time I made it to the car, I felt like, oh gosh, the hard part's over, you know? And like, that's one thing, like I always tell people, like the, <laughs> the women, like the pros on this tour, like you guys are tough because you do all that. Then you drag your boats, you know, to wherever it is that we're fishing. And then you guys are sun up, sun down, practicing, you know, doing all that trying to eat a meal, <laughs> you know, and that's before the tournament, you know, and like, I mean, it's work, <laughs> you know, it's not just going out, you know, bluegill fishing, you know, with the kids, like it's, it's actual work and sure. we're all thankful for it, you know, but I know as a co-angler, you know, like when I was out with Angie, you know, now granted, like Angie was trying to figure out a new boat. Like she had a lot of other things that she was trying to manage. And I, you know, I'm like, I just want to catch a fish. You know, this was my first time out for the year and I caught a big, you know, a really nice drum. <laughs> but a co-angler can relax a little more, 
you know, and which is which is nice, but you guys are next level, like preparers. So how do how do you guys like get that next wave of anglers to come to to you? Because I know, like I'm, I feel you know, confident as far as like in my, in my hometown, I run the boat. I fished the tournaments. My dad is co-angler to me. And I feel like, man, I just don't know. <laughs> oh. How do you guys get us to make that jump? Convince me to make that jump, Pam. <laughs> Sometimes you just have to do it. And I, I know this from when I first started. Um, I mean, I've, I've been fishing for a while, but um, I started with the LBAA. And I know that Secret and Cheryl both were very good mentors to me. And they encouraged me to do those things, which I, I had stepped up to the boat, but I, I had not always been a boater. I mean, I had fish you know, a lot with my husband and the boys, my boys. And so I had kind of just learned those things. But there is a point to where when you learn the basics, it's really time just to go out on your own. I mean, you, there's just the time that you have to make that to say, I can do this. Uh, you know, I remember we have a, a big pasture area in our, our yard. And I would practice back in the boat because I didn't know how to back a boat. And that's how I learned to back a boat because I didn't want to be in public trying to back a boat and me not be able to. <laughs> so I had, we had a little shed area and I would take and back that boat and I practice and that's how I learned doing that. You know, uh, then as far as driving the boat, I, I watched Joey, my husband and, you know, seeing the things that he did and how he did it. And then it just kind of came natural to do those things. So but it's one of those steps that you just have to sometimes make when you get enough experience that you just got to say, okay, and just find it within yourself. Anything that you want to do, you can achieve if you want to do it bad enough. I mean, that's my thought. And maybe that's my competitive drive that I have is, you know, I am very competitive. I, I like, I like to win. I like to, you know, to know how to do things. And so maybe that's that drive that I have within me. To, to do those things is that would you say the biggest thing that's driven you in your career to um, put in all the work that it takes to be a pro I, I think having that competitiveness in you is the thing that's probably the drive that you know that I have that that makes me do what I do awesome I mean it it is a fun thing as well but when you're out on that water that's just that's just competitiveness in me, you know. Uh, I'm everybody's friend. I will, and I, I'm going to be kind to everyone. But everybody always uh, wants to catch the biggest and most fish. We're friends until takeoff, <laughs> and unless somebody's waving the dip net, you know, we're we're not friends until we weigh in. You know, like if there's an emergency, we're friends again. But basically, it's you know. It, we'll we'll chat if you know the dip nets being waved, you know, raised. But other than that, we'll see you at weigh in, <laughs> you know. And then, uh, like I I always use the term, and I said this in every show I think so far. I always say on and off the water because the LBAA we are a family, you know. I mean, you know, last week you know we talked about Terry because she lost her dad and you know, Terry, we're still thinking of you and praying for you. Um, but we found out about that, you know, on day two. And like Secret said, you know, we're close to each other's families. We know each other's families. And I just think that there's something special about that, you know. Um, but <laughs> we're friends, we're family on and off the water. And that's just, I, it's phenomenal, you know, but we are all competitive we will elbow each other off that stage <laughs> you know 
which is great. And Pam, you know, I, I can only hope to be as good as you at some point in my life. <laughs> so if I am ever in contention with you one day, I, you know what? I don't even got to beat you. <laughs> Honestly, you are just that good. So, you know, I just, you're, you're a great human being. You're a great angler. And I'm glad I shared a boat with you. If nothing else, like I, you're wonderful. <laughs> Maybe we'll get together again one day. You know, I, I really hope that we do, you know, because I'm, I'm not as green as I was back then, you know, and I will definitely feel comfortable being, I'll, I'll ask questions on the spot now. I'll drive you nuts now. <laughs> now wait, why are you doing that? Uh, I remember you know. that you, you are a good angler. You, you <laughs> so I, I do remember that. Well, I appreciate it. I, if nothing else, I, I fish as hard or harder than anybody that I know. <laughs> I might not always catch them, but nobody fishes harder. That's for sure. I give it my best try. <laughs> that's what we have to do is fish hard. That's true. And you know, Angie, did you have anything that, that you wanted to ask her before we let no, her jump just, off? Just uh, thank you so much for, for joining us tonight. And I learned a lot um, just in this conversation. So I just really appreciate it. I look forward to getting to know you more yeah. as, uh, as we go on with our future LBA tournaments. And um, yeah, just thank you so much. All right. Well, thank you for giving me the opportunity. I enjoyed it. Yeah. yeah. And Fishing, we can talk fishing. I'm in for it. Absolutely. And Pam, before you go, is there anybody, like as far as your sponsors or anything, that you wanted to chat about, you know, give a shout out before you left? Sure. I, I would like to say, you know, my, my husband is a very much supporter of what I do. And uh, so the, the business does help me out a whole lot. Joey Ridgel Septic Service and Sanitation. We work hard and we play harder. So <laughs> I, I fish harder than what, what I work and I work pretty hard. So, you know, I just want to thank him and, uh, you know, my office staff. They take care of things when I'm gone. We have about 30 employees. And nice. so I, I do have a, a big managing job to do here, but they always hold it all together for me. And so without them, I wouldn't be able to do what I do. That's awesome. Gary Automoto, he, he is wonderful. Uh, you know, he is, he, uh, we, we get to go to his ranch and he's there to teach us. And, the really? guys. and so, um, <sighs> it's, it's pretty amazing that we, that I've had the opportunity to get to, to do that. So I, I feel very privileged for that part of it. That's and then, amazing. Um, I have a local bank that here that, that helps me as well to pay my sponsorship fees and that's first state bank of brownsboro so i'm very grateful for them that they're always there supporting me uh in my fishing habit nice so, but all all the friends and family that support me uh you know I, I just really appreciate each and every one so but but secret and cheryl just to let you guys know with the lbaa family i mean those were really great mentors to me and uh, they they really made me step out. I know that Secret encouraged me many times to say, Pam, you can do this. You can do this because there's there's times when you first start out that, that you have doubt, you know, and you're mm -hmm. going to always sometimes doubt yourself. But she was always there to encourage me. You can do this. You know how to do this, you know. And so just, you know, I'm very thankful of the LBAA uh, ladies because they are great. I mean, a lot of those ladies with like Terry, I mean, we've gone uh, salt water <laughs> fishing together, you know, and, and she is very competitive because the first event that I fished, she made the comment of it is on like Donkey Kong because I beat the first event. And so <laughs> it stuck with me and that, you know, we are just remain friends and there's a, there's times that we plan trips. And we are both in Florida at the same time, and we go and do some saltwater fishing together. So that's you know, awesome. 
ladies that that you know I hang out with other than just the uh, just the LPA events. There's you know friendships that have been made that's that's going to last a lifetime. So uh, that's amazing. Very, very thankful for this organization and mm -hmm. just and, any lady to to join. And and you know what? Like we had a lot of new people that showed up in Texas, and I hope that we keep getting these new anglers that are in and I am trying my best to get some some new people coming in and having these new relationships you know to develop because you know we all want it to grow you know as much as possible and you know have it grow over the years and have you know new co-anglers and new boaters and I was shocked in Texas. I was like, I, I hardly know anybody. Hey, I know you, <laughs> you know? And so it, it really was um, amazing to see so many new faces. Um, so I hope that, you know, a lot of the people that showed up in Texas, cause we, you know, we were in Texas and it was close. I hope they had so much fun, <laughs> you know, even though the fishing wasn't what we thought it was going to be. I hope that they had so much fun that they're like, well, North Carolina is not that far away, <laughs> you know, because it, it would be great to, you know, for us to just keep building and stuff, you know, so it's just. I love my sisters, you know, it, it keeps us going, just the relationships we have, you know, and I just appreciate everybody, you know, so, well, I am so thankful for you for sharing your time with us tonight, Pam, and if we don't chat before North Carolina, you, I already said, I already had Deanna say that you know, that or volunteered for her to adopt me for day one. So you can adopt me for day two. So, do that. yeah. So just whatever they do, you know, for the draw, just f that you guys can figure that out. I'm up for adoption, <laughs> you know, so really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Pam. All right. You guys okay. You. Have a great night. Thanks for letting me share. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh, I just love her. <laughs> She's awesome. We're very, very lucky, yeah, to have her just in the organization to learn from. When I fished with her, I mean, it was over a decade ago, and I was just in complete awe of her. So, I, yeah, I'm just almost starstruck by her still she's she's just that good you know you kind of miss out because you fished the one tournament and then you're like mm -hmm. you know what i got my boat i got my sponsorships and you're like no fear <laughs> angie is here you know all in which is great i you know i don't have you know that many guts to do that just yet but uh you know, you, you kind of miss out on the fact that, you know, you didn't get a, to fish with as many people. I've fished with a lot of different people, but, um, yeah, but, that's, that's one thing, but, you know, as we build these friendships, it might not be a tournament situation, but maybe we'll get the opportunity to, to fish in a different setting. So um, yeah, that's true. Salt water, you know, I love me some salt water. So I've, only gone once. Yeah, you know, as as we grow and stuff on here, um, you know, hopefully we'll be going to some, you know, non-tournament trips, like you said, salt water. I know that, I mean, the ice fishing girls, they do stuff all winter long. As soon as that stuff freezes, they're doing stuff. I would love to do a get together, <laughs> not because of the fishing necessarily, but they just seem like a really cool group. Mm. Ice fishing women, like they're really hardcore and it's just yeah. different, you know, yep. but anyway, yeah. yeah, but I, it's just, you know, it's just great. All the different groups and 
all that stuff. And, you know, I'm anxious to see all the different people that we'll get to meet along the way. Um, yeah. So, so funny thing, this entire show, I have not been able to see either. I could see the two of you, but it was always just a static image, I think, because of my uh, Internet issue. And I, I'm i moving, so it was like throwing me off. It's kind of funny. I'm like video on my end. I can see myself, and, and then you two are just photos. <laughs> so, oh, but, really? Yeah, but the good thing is I was able to hear both of you the, the entire time, so that was good. Um, yeah. I did want to say I, I, I pulled up the Facebook here, and uh, – and Jeff Dubwin from Al's Goldfish and, and maybe Mandy too. They share a Facebook account, but uh, complimented me on my hat tonight. So <laughs> wore, wore that for you guys. Um, had some other people watching us on the Facebook. Pam Horn was on there. Uh, she, uh, hey, she Pam. A few minutes late, but she, she joined us. So shout out to Pam. Thanks for tuning in and um, looking forward to seeing you hopefully in in north carolina good deal i have not checked my facebook yet because i've been doing the chat in here i will check my facebook page though i promise um i'll do that you know tonight it'll probably be here in a little bit um i did want to um do say two things just real quick um for our north carolina tournament we are going to Lake Hickory in Hickory, North Carolina. And for the, the Toyota bonus bucks, it is a program. Is it 2017 or newer for the vehicles, Angie? I, I don't I know because, because I have a Ford. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I think that it's, if you have a tow vehicle, that's a 2017 or newer, there's a um, program for bonus bucks that you um, can get for the LBAA because it's a program that um, our sister, Martha Goodfellow, she is amazing at coordinating this for the LBAA. Um, and so my friend, Kevin Franklin, he works for, it is Mike Johnson's Hickory Toyota in Hickory, North Carolina. Um, he's my buddy and he actually is going to be helping some of the ladies out who are looking into that. But for those of you who live there, check him out because he can hook you up. Um, and I'm not in the market for a new vehicle, so I'm not going to be looking, um, even though he's trying to get me to buy a beautiful new custom Tundra. Um, it's not going to happen, Kevin. <laughs> but uh, anybody who's looking into that, be sure to check him out. And my man, Cowboy Coffee Chew from Wisconsin, thank you for all of the beef jerky that you sent to me. Um I really appreciate it because it is my favorite, my new favorite snack on the boat. It is clean. I don't drop it everywhere. It is filling. And I just, I love it. <laughs> so check him out. I'm going to leave his website in the description and Angie's information for her podcast tomorrow. And I don't have anything else. Angie, do you? I don't think so. Ready to, ready for next week. We'll see what uh, what we come up with for next week. But these are, these are fun so far, and uh, we'll be in North Carolina before we know it. Here, I have really before we know it. It is going so fast. <laughs> I am going to get to fish in Kentucky this week for the Super Bass Holes Tournament. I am so excited. Region two, David Wyatt. I am coming for you for the rest of the week. It's my only goal for the week as of right now. You guys have a great right. week. Good luck. Thank you. All Catch right. you guys later. Bye-bye. Good night.